Hello everyone, it is Brittany from The Pretty Plus, and today I am doing my 2021 budget recap. I have not done, I think, a full recap like this, but I've always intended on doing one. Um, this year I decided I might as well, since I dropped the ball on sharing my budget for the last half of the year, I thought I would at least share some information about where our money went and how the year went. And as far as money goes, <laughs> 2021 was surprisingly a good year in other areas of our lives. Not so much. You can see the last video that we did. I'll link it for you below. Um, that is like a Mason family update. And, and you you can see that our <laughs> our family life was, besides our family, is good. But we just had a rough year. Um, some things that allowed this year to be successful were... Um, Brett working a lot of overtime at his job, um, at a job he enjoys, um, versus 2020. He, um, he switched jobs in November of 2020, so he hated his job for most of the year. So that's been really nice, um, that he's actually liked what he does. I switched jobs in the middle of the year, um, and it allows me to stay home more often because I work from home now and that's worked out really well. Um, government money has been helpful in a sense that, um, pandemic allowances in the area that I'm in have worked to our advantage for like childcare and things like that. There are, um, programs where we're able to get money back for that, um, since I was an essential worker at the beginning of the year and Brett is an essential worker. So we have gotten money for that. And then um, we've gotten a few gifts from family um, in regards to when we had our twins and just knowing the crazy year that we've had, um, some family has been kind and helped us out a bit, um, which we're so grateful for. Um, that has allowed us to stay afloat. And I think that our expertise in budgeting and our own money had had a lot to do with it. So it's been very helpful that we took the time, you know, it's like almost five years ago, four and a half years ago, to start getting out of debt and into budgeting and making smart, wise decisions with our money. That way we know how to make it start if we need to. Um, Anyway, I'll get into it. If you don't know who I am, <laughs> I'm Brittany. Um, I am the owner, um, blogger at theprettyplus.com, um, as well as I'm on the internet all over at The Pretty Plus, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all of them. You can find me at The Pretty Plus. I'm a digital marketer by day, content creator, mother, creative, everything else. I was going to say by night, but it's all the time. So that's what I do. I lead my family of five, which is me, my husband, Brett, my three-year-old daughter, Clara, and my twin boys who are nine months, Pierce and Beck. Um, we have a modest Midwestern income. Um, I would say I need to look up like what the median income is for a f like a five family or five member household or like at least just two adults bringing in money in the Midwest, because I'd say we're pretty average. Maybe even a little below average, but we're doing it. And I say that to encourage you, because if you, you know, aren't making six figures um, income for yourself, you can, you can do it. So we have, and it's been successful. Um, we started working on getting out of debt in 2017, July 2017 to be specific. And almost five years later, we've completely transformed our family's finances and our relationship with money and our outlook on money as well. So if you stick around in the video, you will see me discuss where our money went in 2021 how much we put in savings, sinking funds, and where we spent our money for fixed expenses, debts, variable expenses, home repairs, and other category. For our fixed monthly expenses, we had a yearly total of $21,169. Um, big part of that was our mortgage, which is $680 a month. Not crazy. We don't have any PMI. We do pay our escrow out of that. Um, so, 8160 car payment, one car, my car, 
it was a newer car, 2019 um, SUV. We pay 360 a month for it, so 3960 for the year. Actually, I think there were a couple months or one month at least that we didn't pay for it because I bought it in December of 2020. Um, our phones were $2,004, internet $807, Hulu and Paramount Plus subscriptions were $177 for the year. This is uh, where we saved a lot. If we would have paid like our full daycare amount, it's almost $17,000, I believe, is how much it costs. In 2021, we only spent $4,901. Um, I was telling my husband earlier because of the plan that they have here in Indiana, I think it's called Learn to Grow. I think that's the name of it. Um, but basically, um, if you make even 400% times the, um, the uh, what is it, the base poverty level, you can get some money. So like... It's, in Indiana, very easy to accomplish, I guess you could say. I don't, I'm trying to, like, basically we don't make a ton of money, but we don't make, like, a tiny amount of money. And we're still able to get a lot of our daycare covered through this program. Um, and we've been benefiting from it since June, I believe. The twins were born in March. They were supposed to start daycare. They did, they started daycare in the very end of June. Yeah. And then basically we, we haven't paid a full bill for the twins being in daycare because that's when it started. So $4,901 is always spent on daycare this year, which blows my mind because even with just Clara, it was like 6,000 to 7,000 a year. And I, again, I know in Indiana, that's, that's, um, really inexpensive daycare to begin with. So we're really grateful for that. It's helped us so much. And then for our allowances, that's money that Brett and I get per month um, just for spending money on whatever we want. And that was $1,160. Um, for sinking funds, we put away $6,980. This, if you don't know what sinking funds are, um, they're like a short-term savings solution. So technically savings, but it's savings that we spend within the year. So I, I never count it as savings, although it technically is. And if I needed money, <laughs> it's there. Um, but this is like a, a helpful thing for planning. If you're a planner, this is helpful for you. Or if you're bad at, if you're bad at things coming up. So a lot of times, places or people will do like Christmas club savings accounts and it's where they pull money out of each paycheck to pay for their Christmas. This is like a glorified version of a Christmas club, right? So we saved $1,500 for our twins sinking fund. That was to fund baby expenses and for the first year of their life. That also is what we did with Clara. Um, we saved a thousand bucks for her. We saved a thousand dollars for the twins, but 500 we did in 2020. So only 1500 was from this, this year or 2021. And then we buy things like the stroller and all that goodness that we don't get from friends or family, um, out of there. And then we will upgrade their car seats this year, uh, in 2022 to like car seats that stay in the car. And we will use whatever's left to help offset funds from their like first birthday party and it'll be gone. Um, we have a car and home one that's there just to save money to help offset any car and home repairs as they pop up in 2022. We're actually not doing this fund because we do have like a bigger savings account now that we don't, we can cash flow it typically um, within our, since we're not working on paying off debt, we can cash flow it that month. Or if it's something that pops up that's bigger, we have enough money and savings that we can cover it. And it's not, it's not as much of like a, oh no, this is popping up. Like we don't have the money for it as it used to be when we were working on paying off debt. So that's always nice. <laughs> um, so 1200 is what we had in there. Um, 
for Clara's room. It was her third birthday, so we did a big girl redecorating project. We had five hundred dollars in there. We only ended up spending like three eighty or some three seventy. Um, so the rest of it was just thrown in. I think into the travel fund to roll over for the next year. Um, but yeah, so we we used all that one. We pay, we save monthly to pay for our insurance yearly, so we get a discount. So our insurance for both of our cars, which we have full coverage on, is one, it ends up being like, I think this year it was like 1400 So we had to put an extra 20 bucks or something to it. Um, but having a bulk of it saved up and knowing that we just have it there is super helpful for our sanity instead of just having to be like, oh, time for our insurance. And then what would happen if we didn't, wouldn't be a huge deal we would just have to go to monthly payments. I don't really want to do that, right? Like, so it's nice to have it there. We knew that 2021 wasn't going to be a big year of travel for our family. And we also had like money saved up from 2020 where we didn't travel there either. So we saved 300, but I think we already had like 400 in there. Um, we used that to visit Cleveland in November. And that's the only traveling we did in 2021. So, um, yeah, we we'll, we use it for visiting family and other small trips in 2023, probably. And after that, we'll probably start trying to travel more, hopefully, um, COVID be damned. And, um, we'll put more toward that, but, um, the small amount was nice just to help pay for our Airbnb and, and gas. And then, Gifts is where a fund that we set aside gift money for gifts for birthdays and holidays for our close friends and family. Um, so we say like each kid gets this amount, each parent gets this amount, that type of thing works for us. But we have noticed that since we have, again, a more disposable income available to us that we go over those and the gifts fund is one that I can't get rid of but need to find a way to rework, if that makes sense. And then the Mason Fund is um, from a pop-up on my computer. The Mason Fund is all the gifts and celebrations for our family. So me, Brett, and the kids. And then it also pays for a museum membership. Um, we just started that in 2021. And it, we plan on getting a museum membership to the Children's Museum here in, in Indianapolis. Okay. Our debts um, are minimal. So we have hospital. Oh no. We have hospital debt um, that are from Clara. Clara has hospital debt from when she was born, basically. It's hard to explain. It's now not when she was born. It's like the stuff that added up on top of it <laughs> from after she was born. Um, but $860 is what we owe there. And then my hospital bill, oh, about 4500 after all is said and done. We paid $600 from directly from our HSA. Our minimum is $25 a month, and that is all we paid toward them. There's 0% interest. We see zero reason why we should pay them off early. Um, the own, it, It's actually benefited us to not pay them off early, which I've mentioned before. I mentioned that in my December budget review. Um, we've had things like written off, um, since like in the last six months, we've had things written off from mine and Claire's bill and neither of us have been in the hospital. Like, I was in the hospital at the beginning of the year. Um, but it was from when Claire was born that they like took money off basically. And then we got our basement waterproofed. I don't want to go too much into it. It was one of those hot mess things from the year. Um, but the cost of that was $10,000. And they had a 0% promo for um, financing where you just have to pay it back by August um, of this next year. So I think it was like a year to pay it off um, within that promotional period. And if you didn't, you would just have to pay all the interest. We're not going to do that. We have the whole amount saved is what I'm saying. Um, we're just keeping it in our account because we can collect interest on that, even though it's marginal. Um, it is still something. And then we'll probably pay it back in like June or July. So we make sure it's all settled by August. Um, 
we, I, it is a debt, obviously. We didn't really consider it a debt, like, as much because we knew we could, we could have put it in our HELOC and just paid it back and it would have been paid back, like, within a few months. Um, but we decided to do this because there is an interest on our HELOC. And if we needed to, we could take money from our HELOC to pay this off if, if push came to shove. Like, setting ourselves up for success, knowing that there were other options <laughs> so that we didn't get stuck with a crap ton of um, interest because without the 0% promo, it is 25% interest, which is insane. So um, we have the money for it. We just haven't paid it yet. This is the last you'll hear about it as far as it being in the debt because we have the money. There's no reason to even talk about it anymore. It's done. So we spent $10,600 on debt in 2021. Yeah. So variable expenses. I say, welcome to the danger zone. It just felt right when I wrote that. And I think it's just because I was thinking about how much we spent over on groceries and restaurant, but rightfully so we had an insane year. So I'm, I'm not going to touch too much on it because again, I don't want to harp on it all, but it was a lot. And, um, convenient food, convenience foods were really helpful, especially when we were in the hospital for over two months of our lives this year. Um, and trying to survive with twins and a three-year-old, twin infants and a three-year-old. So for variable, variable expenses, our total was $19,665 this year. $5,515 was groceries. $3,100 was restaurant. Utilities were $3,513. Gas for our cars was $3,607. We spent $2,623 on our kids. That was like specifically designated for them. And then our home help, which was babysitting, lawn care, house cleaning, and some pest control was $1,307. So for our other expenses and savings, the amounts came to $25,199 for home repairs. This, however, does have that $10,000 in it. So if you're going through and trying to be tricky and see like how much money we actually had, it'll be hard to do because some of the things are notated twice in different areas because they fall into diff the same categories. And I'm trying to give you an overview and not like just show you my bank account basically. <laughs> but, um, so home repairs were $25,000 is what we spent on home repairs this year. <laughs> it's just insane. Um, general savings, one thousand. Oh, sorry, eighteen thousand four hundred ninety dollars. I can tell you, we don't have eighteen thousand four hundred ninety dollars in there currently. We have spent a lot of that money that was specifically designated for savings because we had a lot of stuff pop up. So <laughs> there we go. Um, and then the other is we bought like furniture. We did a few, like we bought a few fun things like tickets to a concert for next year and stuff like that. Um, other random house expenses, wants, things that we didn't like specifically need, but we wanted for the house. And then some needs that we need, we had that didn't fall into other categories and, and more random crap was $13,787. <sighs> That's all. That's all the, uh, expenses and savings. That's where all of our money went for 2021. Um, looking forward to 2022, I have three main money goals. They are stick to grocery and restaurant budgets because that is always where I feel that we go over. And if I just say like, no, we can't go out to eat because we don't need to, we have food here. We'll be fine. If I say, this is what's on the list. And when I go to the grocery store and I stick to it, we should be fine. Um, but it's hard to do sometimes because it's just convenient to buy the box of snack cakes or to just swing by the Taco Bell. Um, so with that being said, I am raising the amount that we're um, able to spend on grocery and restaurant. Actually, I think restaurants staying pretty much the same, but we're just going to try to stick to it. And grocery, like they're 
are more kids in our house now. So the twins are, are starting to eat food as well. Um, so where we have been able to get by with like 200 to $250 a month, um, we definitely need to move up to at least 300 300 to 400 a month is what I'm looking at for 2022. It just depends. And it's very dependent on where the prices land as far as at the grocery store. Things are getting expensive and I'm noticing that things that I normally buy are up to a dollar more um, for like for a package of lunch meat. Specifically, this just happened. I went to the store and it's usually $4.98 for the like package that I buy, Brett. And it was five ninety eight, and I was like, shoot, like the dollar is like, it makes a difference if you're doing like a whole planning budget. So that all being said, that's what I want to stick to for that. Um, another goal is to hopefully have less random excessive home repair bills. We do have some goals for things that we're looking at fixing in our house, but those shouldn't be random. Um, but there is always the possibility of them finding random things that they have to do. <laughs> anyway, hopefully less random excessive home repair bills. And then the third is more money to savings to get it back up to that emergency fund level that we had before. Um, yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that um, seeing where all of our money in the year helped you in some sort of way. Or if you were just feeling nosy, I hope that it like scratched that itch for you. Whatever. I don't really care. You're watching. It doesn't matter to me. So um, if you enjoy videos like this or enjoy my presence, you can subscribe, comment, and let me know you liked it. Or you can always follow along on the prettyplus.com or find me on the internet in other places at the pretty plus on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and I thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.